Freezer House. Here, welcome back, everybody. This is the Praiser House. I'm your host, Brandon Bailey. With is Mike Rathke here, guys. It's episode three. It's three. We, I, I mean, the two went by fast, and uh, yeah, here we are again. Well, it was interesting because we we're like, okay, we got to go in. We got to do episode one. It's the intro. Yeah, Praiser House, make it happen. Praiser two or episode two was right behind it. Yeah, it was on a Friday. And it's what's funny is it was actually more like uh, one point one and one because we did actually like what five dry runs. Like yeah, it was important. It was we were just flubby. Yeah, we had to figure out all the technical. There's a lot of I mean this is a there's a lot of technical in this in this podcast. It, but a new chapter for the Praiser House starts yeah, today. It does. Like and in the bar set. It's set high. Yeah. So no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> and we're just gonna jump right in. There's there's no there's no wasting time. Yeah. You know God's gonna get all the glory here today. You yeah. know His will, not ours. And we brought in someone really cool. You know, you're you. Everyone knows you like from your worship days, and and still doing. Obviously, you had that killer EP that dropped. Uh, you know, I've never worked in this space of, yeah. of, of metal, like metal, like yeah. real, like like this isn't like the soft side. No, this isn't like um, uh, poison. This is like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, 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 that is exactly right. This is not your Aerosmith. No, no. <laughs> Uh, sorry, guys, but uh, we don't, we don't, you know. No disrespect to either of those bands, but yeah. this is this is this is uh, yeah, this is metal. And we're lucky to have yeah. him on. I mean, you reached out to him. His name's Jeremy Schaefer, um, lead singer of Earth Groans. Yeah, and I don't even say Scrammy. This guy's got a power vocal. He's got a power vocal. Yeah, and 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 Earth Groans is one of those bands. Like, uh, there's a lot of good metal bands out today. Yeah, but in my humble opinion, like Earth Groans is at the top of that list as yeah. far as <clears throat> innov- innovation goes. In um, and technique, I mean, they're they're killing it and making some moves. Yeah, like you know, I love people. Like you know, we you know my tenure as an artist manager for all these years, and we always said that we're you know there's competition, we seek collaboration. Yeah, when there's dead space, create new air. Yeah, you know, this is a guy who's taking advantage of this whole pandemic, this whole thing. oh for sure. Like I'm not just gonna sit around, guys, and like wait for the next thing to come. No, no, no. They've released two major projects this year. Yeah, two, two. That's that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. And we know what it's like to be in ride arounds and be in the studio. Um, there can be blank spaces in those t- creative times, but the guys are pushing through. And we're going to get into it. So we have online, Jeremy's here. So, Jeremy, what's going on, man? Yo, what's up? What's up? Somebody talking trash about poison over there? Yeah, I guess I know. <laughs> Rathke's like, we thought we were going to start off like real chill. And Rathke's like, nah, man, we're going to slay it today. <laughs> right on. What's up, dude? Thanks for having me on. Stoked to be in on here. That was quite the intro that made me sound a lot cooler than I really am. So, Well, listen, it's an honor. Everyone here is our, we are all children of God, my friend. And uh, we are grateful for you to be here. Really, thank you for joining us. This, awesome. You know, yeah, the, the, pra- the Praiser House, uh, we welcome you always. And we and hey, next time too, make sure to bring the band, dude. We'll uh we'll get a whole you know the yeah. whole thing going on there. Yeah, we all live in different states, so it's pretty messed up. But yeah, wow. we can, we'll we'll patch them in. We'll do like a little you know yeah. four window thing. That's yeah, awesome. technology works. How, yeah, how, how do you how are you cutting but, uh, albums right now? Are you, you just doing it all virtual and then send it sharing files through Dropbox or something? Um, so I I actually pretty much write and record a majority of it okay um or uh, i write a majority of it and then uh bring guys in for okay. for recording okay um cool. on our, our most recent uh ep that we put out waste i did everything but the drums we brought our drummer in to okay uh, record on that yeah and awesome. calling us so. all the way from south dakota right yeah, yeah, dude. So where the pandemic is raging strong here, it's like we're like the worst state really? right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we suck. If you ever need to break from those cold, harsh winters, we're in sunny Vero Beach, Florida. I always joke oh, as a Florida baby. native, dude, that like the, the the seasons are hot, 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 and warm. So by all means, you're always welcome yeah, to come here. We're man. in the warm season now, so it'd be a good time yeah. to visit. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm all about like I'm like I'm in the the wrong the wrong state for sure, the wrong climate. I'm all about the heat i would like nice i think i was like born to be like a lizard man i could <laughs> i could live in the desert i could live in florida i like if i'm gonna move somewhere it's either gonna be florida or like phoenix well yeah there's well, plenty of room here plenty of Come room on down. <laughs> yeah i don't know about the metal game here but it doesn't matter you create your own path there's man, a, and you're proven that a, year florida's year. pretty banging for yep. metal honestly. is it Yep. Yeah. Tells you how much metal you know history I have here. 
Uh, man, you guys are going to school me today. It's going to be great. It's uh, Dude, everybody's got their strengths, man. So, dude, from South Dakota originally, right? You want to tell us a little bit about yep. that? Bone and raised. But, oh, actually, yep, Jeremy, so. I'm so sorry. I, you know, it's a news alert. I, Mike told me earlier, we have to ask you the one thing before all else. Did, were all you right, born with it. that mustache, dude? I was, yes. You were born yeah, with actually, the mustache. No, no, I was. The mustache came first, and I sprouted from. There it is. I bloomed <laughs> from the mustache like a seed. Thank you for representing the mustache game for all of us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's it, kind of the only thing I got going for me. So. <laughs> and I am doing no shave November right now. That's so great. what day are we on? Day seventeen. Yeah. So yeah. the beard is not great. It's coming not, in. Like I do not have a. No, it's it's pretty <laughs> patchy. It's pretty rough to be on. It's kind of honestly like kind of embarrassing but the mustache like that's always just been my strong game so i'll probably just keep rocking that admirable nonetheless for sure yeah so but south dakota man tell us about this upbringing to get you all the way to 2015 before the band comes together yeah so pretty weird uh i am i'm the black sheep hard uh if i would say pretty much the whole state (laughs) there's not a whole lot of uh tattooed metalhead individuals in south dakota Um, especially in my family, I come from a family, um, of like straight up farmers, like everybody, I have four siblings, all married, got kids and stuff. And my parents both die hard farmers. So everyone in my family are all like die hard farmers. And then there's me that's (laughs) like, I'm going to play music. (laughs) So, um, but yeah, I'm like the only one, the only one that has tattoos and piercings and, if uh, if I were to tell people I was adopted, they would believe it 100 percent. <laughs> nice. And so, but, what part of South Dakota exactly were you guys were you from? So um, we're in uh, the southeast corner. Uh, oh. We're like uh, an hour outside of Sioux Falls. Very cool. Well, we appreciate yep. your parents' career choices because you know I come from a long line of dirt farmers as well, uh, mostly in Florida, southern Georgia. Sure. Hardworking folks. Hardworking. Yeah, folks. definitely. Got the yeah, drive. Yeah, definitely. Yep, I learned a lot of work ethic from my dad, um, like almost to the point of like fault, where now uh, it's hard for me to not be working, you know. That's a good thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm like is. always, if I am if I try and take time off, I like feel guilty about it, so. Yeah, I get that. But, but there's some lessons in that too, you know, I mean, yeah. to think of that, like, you know, we've got a lot of young metalheads listening to and other th- other people out there and creators, and we're like, you got to have some drive. Like it's, yeah. you're not going to be like Instagram oh, yeah. famous. Like, let's just be honest, you know? Yeah. If you're trying to do metal, it's most likely the only way you're going to make it is if you work your butt off. Yep. Yeah. So, exactly. I mean, there's a few bands that like, you know, they're the right thing at the right time and then they just blow up and that's awesome. That's great for them. But for like the other 95% of bands out there, it's like the only reason they're making it is because they're working hard and touring nonstop. And, and they and they love what they're doing. It's like it's like yeah. we talked about last episode. Like what's what is success? What is passion? Or what is success? What is failure? What is selling out? And it's yeah. success mm-hmm. is, is passion. Failure is lack of passion. And selling out is pretending to have passion. And, and if sure. you have that passion within you, it's, you know, what, whatever yeah. the genre, whether it's metal – Hip hop, whatever. It's like that passion will drive you and cause you to, you know, to work for it. Yeah, you know, we've tried to do our homework with you, Jeremy, and you know, f- you know, forgive us for making mistakes to this interview, but really, we looked at it as like you were called for ministry. And I know, yeah. like, I, like I was supposed to be, th- I, I really wanted to be that guy, like who sang and like inform, like what you do, you know, Mike does. But I was, I was naturally built for business and helping empower you guys, you know, be, sure. a, be your artist manager. And you know, I, I think about this. There's got to be a time before you got to Earth Groans in 2015 that the music was maybe not what you do now. It's not like, you know, faith based and it's not you know, your calling. Can you guys tell our audience a little about that? Like, what was that change in, in maybe heart or direction or a calling that went from like, hey, I'm just playing, I'm learning, I'm killing it, but now I'm going to form this band. It's, they're going to call it Earth Groans and we're going to kill it. And it's going to be, give, we're going to give God the glory. Mm-hmm. Um, well, to be honest, um, just about every band that I've been in has been quote unquote, uh, a Christian band. Um, probably the last band I was in though, like not, that wasn't necessarily like that was my, um, I guess my own, my own thing. Um, as far as, uh, the ministry and everything. Um, but this band, I wanted like the whole sole purpose, like one forming was like, I want this to be a ministry. Um, and I want it to be encouraging. I want to be always pointing people towards God, um, and inspiring 
um, you know, just being a, a positive light in people's lives, you know, whatever that can be yeah. for them. Yeah. And how did you meet the guys uh, from all from all the members of the band? Um, just different. Um, just being in the music industry, actually. Uh, Brady and Zach were in um, a band that I had recorded in the past. Mm-hmm. And and then Caden ended up just being uh, somebody that was just a friend of a friend in the music industry. Yeah. And, so. I, and I recall you saying different states. So, I mean, Mike and I, you know, we've gone to Nashville and do, you know, like we all do. You go to a different studio, you get different session players, what have you. How do you guys make that with a rehearsal? I mean, you got, I mean, obviously these guys are all talented, super talented, uh, but yeah. how do you make that work? Yep. So, um, basically every band that I've been in, we've been separated by like states apart. I mean, that's just how you have to do in the, the Midwest. Cause it's hard to find people that are, have the same passion as you and like the same drive and stuff. So, right um, we, we just always just like meet before, uh, a tour rehearse for a few days and then go, I mean, it's pretty, um, like we tour quite often, so we stay pretty well rehearsed. Everyone has the tracks, you know, we're all very professional with playing to the cl- the click and everything like that. So just doing our homework at home and then coming together that's and then, uh, rehearsing hard and then, and then going. That's so cool, man. It's, so. it's, it, it, it take it's just, it's not just like an instant thing to turn that on. You know, we've had, uh, gone around the world on a tour and, Man, those pieces come together. But like you said, with some repertoire, you got the drive. You're all professionals. Uh, you make it happen. And I, I really want to say something about Jeremy. It's really cool. I learned about him. Mike was the other day when you shared that interview with me when we were just started doing our homework. I really love your spirit and your attitude, Jeremy. And there's people that I, as I get to know more about metal and the rock scene, like the hard, you know, the, the hard side of what people could call music. Mm-hmm which I really embrace. I think it's really cool. Yeah. You reach into the depths of places no other genre can go, in a sense. Sure. And mm-hmm. I think it's so beautiful when you spoke in that interview and he said, you just got to keep a positive attitude. Yeah, and there's you know? there was something you said in a, in a, I don't remember if it was the same interview, but there was one that you talked about um, um, the, the poetry in metal music. And, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I've always kind of thought that, you know, Metal music, especially, kind of lends itself to topics of discussion that that you may not hear in a typical like a CCM or whatever band. Mm-hmm. It's like yep. it, there's 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 it, it kind of opens up the door to be able to bring on topics that maybe are a little too um, uncomfortable, which is to me is awesome because like that's the Bible. I mean, there's there's scriptures right. that you read that you're like, man, I did not know that was in there. You know, it's like there's there's because it's real life, and um, mm-hmm. I don't know. When, so in your writing experience, like. Do you you bring into the, some of those those um, more difficult topics into to to spread light onto it? Or? Yeah, I mean, overall, I just want to be real and I want to be authentic with people. And like, uh, life is hard, and there's a lot of dark stuff that we all go through. But um, sometimes we don't like to talk about sure. or don't know how to talk about. Um, so, I just want to, I guess, um, when I'm writing these songs, a lot of times I'm just like writing about experiences and stuff that I've gone through, or I've seen close friends go through, um, stuff that's really hard. So, uh, I guess just taking, you know, those topics, um, and I, I guess writing, you know, so that the listener can, uh, find some encouragement, some solidarity and some of that stuff, knowing that they're not alone through a lot of the hard stuff, um, that we, that we face. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, just like always just trying to be encouraging and I guess shining light on on some of that hard stuff that, yeah. that we deal with. We we're yeah. so called to that. And I thought it was so neat, too, like when going through the band history, going back to the 2015 mark, you know, that that early summer time that you you guys wrote the band name, which came from Romans 823. You want to just give us a quick peek on that one? Sure. Yeah. Um. So when we were trying to decide uh, on name, we were kind of thinking of, you know, what? captures the essence of earth groans like we wanted to be aggressive um and kind of chaotic and stuff so um i think we were kind of thinking of like natural disasters and stuff like that and um and so and in the the bible a lot of times natural disasters are referred to as like the groaning of the earth uh because of the sin and stuff that's in the earth the earth is groaning that's what a natural disaster is um and so we came across that reference, um, the Romans eight twenty three, and it's what's cool about that reference is it it goes on to talk about 
Um, not only is the earth groaning like sin and everything, but the second half is uh, it talks about each one of us within ourselves. We groan for uh, the return of Christ. So yeah. it's not only is the earth itself groaning natural disasters and stuff, but each one of us within ourselves, we groan um, like our spirit groans for for that uh, fulfillment of sonship. It, it, yeah. I think is what it says. Yeah. Um, but so yeah. What a cool picture too. Like, I don't think you get more real than yeah. that. Yeah. I, I I actually use that passage to talk with talk to my daughter. I have a twenty year old daughter, and I was talking with her one day about just about just trying to like elaborate and trying to paint a picture of like what you know because you see the world and it's like man there's so much hurt and there's so much destruction mm-hmm. and chaos and hate and stuff it's like but you I, I was just trying to point it out to her like you got to think about that what your that passage you just referenced it's like you got to mm-hmm. think about you know this whole world was made in perfection at one time and yeah. and even now when you look out and you see like the way the migration of birds and the the population of flowers like how things work you can see that things were made in perfection but something happened that 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 thwarted that perfection and we've been right. in a perpetual state of degradation since then yeah. but mm-hmm. but there's a time coming when that'll be redeemed when that earth right. that groaning will be fulfilled that's within right. within us as children of God and even within nature that we see like you're talking about with the natural disasters and things it's like what a what a that's that's like the hope that's that's what we yeah. look for that redemption and that hope you know that's awesome man right and it's so cool i mean so this this happens right you get 2015 the band's now together you guys are killing it you know you're doing everything you can to push and then you get a you got to tell me was it a knock at the door was it an email is it a phone call from solid state because it was a short 2 years after the formation right yeah um so we I mean, we were touring our butts off, like we were working so hard. Um, and that's all I wanted to do is just be out on the road constantly. And, um, we were, we were just, um, we actually hit them up kind of on, uh, we were about to start writing for our second EP and sort of like, let's send them a press pack and just to plant a seed, I guess, or a bug. So they're like, oh, here's this band that hit us up. Let's look them up. Maybe we'll start following them. You know, that was the whole thought process behind it is just kind of like make them aware of us. And uh, so we sent them uh, uh, this press pack, built this box, and I put so many so many hours into this thing. I love it. Um, And honestly, it was probably like pretty – terrible <laughs> looking but it doesn't matter it was like it got the job Dude, you, done, but you tried you did it yeah i tried i tried my hardest darn it um but so we send we send in this box and the day that they got it they actually um they emailed us and wow. said hey we've we've actually been watching you guys for a while already that's awesome um that's you know sad. let's get on the phone and and talk so um just i guess from our you know the two years of just grinding nonstop and touring I think just kind of uh, they saw, heard something about it, whatever. So they already had taken notice of us. Well, dude, you so just, you it just, was kind of a cool mutual yeah, dude. thing. Yeah. yeah, well, you just said it right there, Jeremy. I mean, my goodness. You know, again, I, I, I refresh the audience. You know, artist management mind and background. And, you, you know, we talked about the drive. Like, you got to have, you know, you got to have a passion to do what you talk about. Yeah. Measure your own success, whatever. But have that drive and then just do. Like, just yep. do. And you guys went out there for two years, like you said, work your butt off. And <laughs> you're like, I put this thing together. I have no idea what's going to happen. But I did right. it. And then they're like, hey, by the way, we already know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so how did that yep. go? Was it a pretty smooth transition to join the label? Because, I mean, they're a great, they're a great group. And obviously, yeah. you know, pretty, pretty well, well made in their own right. Um, but how was the transition? Pretty good, pretty smooth for y'all? Yeah, honestly, uh, the people over at Sauls, they are amazing. Yeah. Um, I truly, truly, uh, dearly love them all. And um, our rep, Adam, he's the guy that I work with the most. Yep. He's, like, the coolest dude. <laughs> like, he's just, like, a rad homie. Um, Does he have a mustache, so, though? Uh, he has a beard. Nice. So <laughs> he's he in does the game. have somewhat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Close enough. Good enough for me. There you go. Um, but, uh, yeah, and uh, – Besides, like the the like three month long process of dealing with lawyers and having them talk their different language and whatever, yeah. um, just like getting the deal worked out and figured out, like everything was like really easy, really great, um, yeah. and it's been awesome uh, since we we've been on the label. So, well, and Mike knows this history too of you guys. You know, soon after signing, you guys release this record, you go on tour, and all of this. 
And then you, it's like it's a very short window of the amount of projects that have that have come yeah. out. You, Mike, do you want to talk about the most recent one? Because that thing you yeah. blew my mind with the new. Yeah, album. The, the the new album, Waste. Um, I, uh, mm-hmm. I I I was actually looking forward to hearing it, and I had it preloaded in my my uh, music platform app, and I. Uh, and then I and then I missed the date. I was like, "Oh man, I missed it. It's already out." So I like I just started like <laughs> snoozing. Yeah. So I just started binging it and man, that song shattered, dude. Wow. It's so I mean, that's great, man. It blew my mind. Yeah, so the whole story of uh waste uh well the so I don't know if you know this, but e- the, both EPs that we were re- released in 2020 go together. Yeah. Uh kind of a uh, story thing, um concepts, I should say. And I'll try not to waste too much time on this, but um, so Prettiest of Things, um, that album is all, uh, it's lighter, it's um, it's brighter. Uh, it talks about a lot of like really happy, pleasant things, the prettiest of things. Um, the whole concept of that was kind of the things that we find beauty in or that I find beauty in um, in this world, things that uh, you want to stick around for. Um, and then it transitions from previous of things into waste and waste is all darker things. Um, the, the harder things that we go through and experience, um, and just talking about some of those topics and shatter. Um, that song is all about mental health, uh, suicide stuff like that. Um, yeah. So initially when I had written that song, I was like, I'm going to write a song about, um, well, when I was coming up with concepts for uh, waste, I was thinking of opposite, you know, concepts from pretty sub things, and uh, death would be one of them because uh, you know pretty sub things is all about life, and um, for instance, silk is all about the life of a flower, and and discussing uh, kind of paralleling us with a flower, and at you know at one at some point a flower is going to die, um, so the shatter ends up being the opposite being talking about death and the, uh, reality, uh, that is. And, um, I guess the weight that we can experience and the depression that we can experience, especially yeah. right, right now. Yeah. Um, so I don't actually know where I just went on that tangent. I just like kind of <laughs> no, went all over was the good. place. I don't know if I explained I, actually, I, I don't know if I even explain. Oh, sorry. What I was trying to say yeah. is so when I was writing Shatter is I was trying to write it about somebody else. And but the the reality was um, a lot of the the lyrics and the thoughts and the weight that I express in this song came from like stuff that I have dealt with or I have experienced just from my own m- mental health. Yeah. So well, I couldn't yeah. ask you to say any clearer. I mean, that was that was the big thing I took from the interview that Mike had shared with me that you released a couple of days ago, and I mm-hmm. said, like, dude, I was like, that's as real as it gets. These yeah. are the kind of people we want on the Praiser House podcast because they're not going to just be like, hey, my last EP was X and go download it, right? Yeah. And it's like, what? Right. What is? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. Like, we all have music out there, you know? Yeah. yeah. And to feel that and to know that, like. One and the same, brother. You know, and, like and that was just straight up for us, and we were like, "Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you." Yeah, and to tackle a topic like that, I mean, that's that's something that's dear to my heart. And yep. and Brandon and mm-hmm. I have talked about it. Like, I, I grew up in a home with the my mother suffered severe mental illness, and so mm-hmm. you know, and, and and even through my own life, I've dealt with with bouts of depression and things, and we, and we all go through mm-hmm. those times, man. Do. And it's like yep. to be able to talk about that issue. And then be able to, to, like, there was a point in the song where, where a voice interjects and says, you know, and it could be the voice of God. And I think you mentioned in another interview um, mm-hmm. that there's a, there's another way. Like, dude, that's, that's that's I mean, that's powerful. That's so awesome. And that's where, like, yeah. the magic for us, Jeremy, is. And that's why we thank you for coming on today is to, not only is it like, hey, like, your lyrics are real. Like, you're truly, you know, expressing this reality of experience. But you're also talking about it from like a behind the scenes. Like this is this is what I went through. I, I just want to encourage you now. Could you give our audience a lift and say like, hey, if you are dealing with this, like for us, like us guys, like we're music heads, right? So like we get in the studio, we write, we produce, whatever, and that's kind of mm-hmm. like our drug. That's like our release. But even those that maybe aren't creative, could you give them something that would say, you know what? If you are this, the, here's you know here's what you can look up to because that that's really important for us and our audience. Yeah. Right. 
Uh, so you, you want me to give them an encouragement? Yeah, please. Right. Anything that would be yeah. on your heart that, you know, like as you talk about, you know, through, like with the song Shatter and these these two prod EPs, what, what like from your own experience, how could you, you know, even encourage our audience if they are going through something? Because we go through it, but we only, they, they see us all the time. We're boring. You're, you're exciting. So. <laughs> right. Um, I guess if you, even if you just go and read uh, there toward the end of the song of Shatter, uh, there is that paragraph paragraph and i feel like that is the best way that i could have possible possibly said um the encouragement you know i believe that we're all created i guess beautifully and wonderfully um and that the minute one of us leaves too early before our time i think um the earth is robbed of that Mm -hmm. and i think that the people around i think people forget or are lied to and told that they're not as yeah. pretty as they, they think they are. Yeah, and so um, I, th- I think that that is a common thing that we go through and we experience um, and a common thing that, uh, that Satan fills our heads with, yeah. you know, is that we're not good enough or we'll never amount to anything. And the thing about it is people I believe that people, I, I think that it even says this in John that, uh, that people hate what they don't understand. And I think a lot of times the people around us that don't like us or talk bad about us or whatever, um, they don't understand us, but God created us each with a purpose and God yeah. fully understands us. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. for those, the moments that we feel totally alone, like there's always God, he understands exactly where we are and he, exa- he, he knows exactly what we're created to be yeah. and what we're capable of. Um, so I guess even if you do feel misunderstood by the people around you or hated by the people around you, like there's always God that's always going to love you yeah. no matter like where you're at. Um, and he understands you, um, cause yeah. he's the one that created you. What a, what a good way to put that too, that if, if a person, when they leave too early, the earth is robbed of, of of uh of that gift to the earth right now. I mean that that's that's a pretty cool that's a pretty cool statement. And I don't know if I've ever really thought of it like that. That no. if if you're taken out of this earth before your time, your the, the earth is actually robbed of something that God, you know, He says that you know, Paul says that we're His workmanship, and it's like we're His mm-hmm. poem. We like that's that's the word for it is poema. I think is like means poem. We're we're God's poem on the earth. I mean, Amen. what a cool right. thought that that is. And that, that kind of I just wanted to talk about one one other song because um. It was such a beautiful story. Um, it was from the last album, and I can't remember if it was Silk or Prettiest of Things, but there was a story you had about a flower that was growing, I think, in your driveway. Yep. Can you? Can you what, yep. which, song, which song was that? Sure. Uh, so that's Silk, yep. So the, the concept behind both of the EPs together um, actually came from that one flower. Super weird. Um, which is like, it's like two, like a metal band, you know, and we're like pulling <laughs> concepts from this little dainty I flower. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it was so, it was just weird. So I've lived, um, at this residence where my studio is, uh, here in South Dakota for about 10 years. And at the end of my driveway, uh, there was always, it's been there. It's a annual or perennial, whatever yeah. the flower perennial. that comes back every yeah, year. Perennial. Okay. Yep. 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 And so every year, it would pop up at the end of my driveway and it wasn't like even planted in a good place. It's honestly just kind of awkwardly <laughs> planted and uh, it's just one, one single plant by itself. And there were so many times that I was like, I should just cut that thing down or get rid of it, dig it out, whatever. Um, because it was just like kind of in the way. <laughs> um, anyway, so two years ago, a year ago, whatever, um, I was going to walk, to the grocery store or something and I was on my phone and something uh something caught the corner of my eye I look over and here's this plant that had been there for like 10 years that I had never seen really do anything um it was fully blossomed and um it was uh, a peony and I don't know if you know anything about peonies but um or if you have them in Florida but peonies like spring up and there's just a stock for majority of the year but the the flower itself will only bloom for like three or four days yeah, and then it beautiful. falls apart and then dies. Yep, yep. Yeah. And so I was like, I ran back in my house. I got my camera. I took a bunch of pictures of it because I was like, this is amazing. Like I've <laughs> never seen this thing ten do years. anything. <laughs> yep. 10 years. And so 
a couple days later, I go out um, of my house again, and I'm just like walking around the block or something. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go look at my peonies. <laughs> and I go over there, and they're just dead. They're gone. Like, all the petals oh, no. are falling <laughs> off and everything. And I, I was, like, almost kind of mad because I was like, what is the point of a flower that is here for just a few days and and then it's gone, yeah, you know? Right. And I had this, like, weird epiphany. And I was like, oh, well, that's what makes it so precious is the fact that we only get a short amount of time yeah. to enjoy it. Uh, take it in, experience it before it's gone. And so it kind of like that just sent me down like the spiral of like, that's what's lo- that's what life is like. <laughs> we get like this short amount of time here, yeah. you know, to make the best out to experience it, um, to enjoy the beauty of it before it's gone. You have to enjoy it while it's there yeah, um, because you only get a short um, yeah. amount of time. So that's, anyways, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's where the whole concept. And came I, from. I talked to my kids about, I mean, I, I always reference my kids cause it seems like, I don't know, conversations with kids like tend to have spiritual parallels somehow, but I <laughs> yeah, talk to my kids definitely. like that. I'm like, man, you guys, you only, you only get one shot at this life. You only get like one, one time around, like make the most of it. Like if you want to, yeah. if you got a passion to like do art, just talking with my daughter, like you got one shot, you get one life, like yeah. don't waste it. Don't waste it. If you don't yeah. go, don't even if you're, if the last thing you want to do is like, you know, sweep driveways or something. I mean, then don't do that. Like go, go find what you're, <laughs> what makes you come alive and do it. There was some, I can't remember who it was now. Some theologian some time ago said, um, d- find what makes you come alive and then go do that. Cause what the world needs now is people that have come alive. I'm like, exactly. that's, oh, perfect. That's, that's perfect. So good. Well, yeah. dude, that's and, very good. And that's the thing. It's like, we get, we're, we're born on a number, right? We die on this number, and then there's that little hyphen, you know, like right between. Yeah. And yeah. make that as wide as possible. Yeah. You know, sure. Is the old line. So this has really been exciting, man, to have yeah, you man. here with us. And all that's been great. Yeah, man. And like chatting right from your your studio, uh, living room, I want to call it like a studio living room, but it's not a living room; it's a studio. And yeah. um, really cool vibe there. Hey, also want to just mention to you. So you want to talk to our audience about what's going on? So. Um, if people haven't checked it out, they definitely need to. Uh, Waste just just came out. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Shatters that lead track there. Really amazing. If you have, look, if even if like, okay, I'm going to shout out for the folks that I've always been around, like the singer songwriters, the folk, you know, country, hip hop, R and B folks. You know, expand your pitch range yeah. and go check out Earthgrown. Oh yeah. Like you can just go to earthgrowns.com and mm-hmm. you can they're on everywhere every dsp yeah. every streaming provider on praiser they're on a core channel yep uh hand curated you know but like like do yourself a favor and go listen yeah like just spend a few moments and i'm not saying you gotta like you like listen to the entire discography i'm just saying pull up the lyric sheet listen to shatter and read through while he's screaming because it yeah. will blow your mind it, yeah dude like it really is impactful and this is a guy who's like writes love songs you know, and there's something <laughs> like, about there's like, something about that, like stepping out of your comfort zone of what, or not not necessarily comfort zone, but like out of your vein of what you typically listen to. There's something about when you when you kind of reach out of that, like even if it's like something ridiculous, like polka, like I'm gonna go check out some polka. You you, you glean, especially as a songwriter, you glean like things from that. Like I never would have thought to do that progression, or I never would have thought mm-hmm. to phrase it like that. Like. Dude, yeah, for sure. Check it out. And also, just to make sure, you know, of course, I have to give you the plugs, you know, on social media, like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you know, forward slash Earthgrowns. It's real easy. Yeah. Earthgrowns with an S there. Um, Jeremy, yep. please tell our audience what you got going on coming in 2021, man. Everyone's excited. Everyone's like, 2020 is over. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully we'll be touring. I mean, obviously, we don't know. Nobody really knows yet. Sure, um, so, course. I mean, but the goal and the hope is that we'll be touring again in 2021. Um, but either way, we'll be releasing more music. Um, we're, uh, working on a ton of new to hunt, a ton of new material right now. Uh, we're trying to make the best of, of this, uh, whole COVID quarantine. Um, yeah. so we've, uh, kept the nose to the grindstone. So we've been working hard. Um, we're going to have, uh, we're going to be dropping something, a single in January. Nice. Um, for a little, t- a little something, a little special. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to give too much away yet <laughs> on that, but uh, we will be doing something cool in January. Um, so for sure, uh, that's something to look forward to. Um, besides that, uh, I guess yeah, we'll just probably be working on another record for 2021 for sure. 
and then hopefully Torn. Um, that's about all I really know for right now. Yeah. Well, dude, I all the little birdie angels, uh, agent angels, if you will, have told me that uh, 2021 summer should be wide open. Um, hopefully, you know, yeah. good Lord yeah. willing. But I got to give mm-hmm. you a shout out too, man. Look, um, I, I dig the merch. I saw the fall line stuff. So like if you it look, if you bypass our request to listen to the music, shame on you. Um, I'm not judging, <laughs> but shame on you. And then you should just turn right around and go buy a new hoodie from Earth Girls. Yeah, they got Big, some cool stuff. Yeah. Dude, just go to their website. It's really easy. They, they I love their website. It's super laid out. Yeah. You just like go to the top, it says store. You know, that's where you buy things and you click it, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, look, I can get an Earth Girls sweatshirt. Yeah. 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 So and we're yeah. we're we're behind yeah. you, man. We we support yeah. you and the band. Um we love Appreciate you. It. We really really do dude you, this has been a such a refreshing refreshing interview and dude you set the bar you kicked this is episode one of the interview <laughs> yeah. jeremy schaefer from earth groans are you kidding <laughs> dude he mike was like mike was like a kid in the candy store i was he was like hey dude guess what and i was like what is it mike he's like hey um like like jeremy from earth groans is gonna, like, and, and the there's interview. it's funny because there's a couple other metalheads in the office too that were like you got Jeremy Schaefer. Oh man, it's crazy. You know, like, like, <laughs> like guys were running around. Like you know when there's a ch- like a, a fire drill, right, Jeremy? And then you're supposed to like exit the building. No, no, no. These guys are running circles. It was like <laughs> it was like they're like earth groans, earth groans, earth groans. And that was the that was the siren. Like maybe we should have a new song there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got you. Want anything else to say to our group, man? This has been so awesome. We, look, we we hope that this just blows up because of you on this interview. And thank you so much. Do you have anything else you want to leave our audience with, man? Uh, no, not really. I mean, just hang in there, stay indoors, wear your masks. You right know, on. Be good to each other. Respect yeah. each other. I don't know. Keep on loving. Yeah. Keep on streaming that record. Yeah. And uh, yeah, feel free to um, reach out to our socials and stuff. We love chatting with fans and stuff. Yeah. You got so, a good IG game going too. Like, yeah. Uh, for sure. You got some trying, cool posts on there. Trying. Uh, all, I think I'll, if I'm correct, I think that's where I saw the interviews about song stories on on IG. Probably. So uh, if, we'll be releasing another one here today in oh, uh, sweet. a few hours or so. Yeah. So we do like every week we try and release one until they're all covered. Um, and they're great. So. There's great content in there. I mean, they're they're sure. really uh, really insightful. It's not just like sure. this song we wrote this because I was you know whatever. There there there's some there's some meat to them. It's like the meat and potatoes on the on the buffet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like that's always been a thing for me. Is like music is it's an avenue, I guess, to get to people to you know minister and share yeah. and be a part of the community. Um, so I just think that that uh, is. Just, I feel like having that backbone behind there or just showing people, I guess, you know, where I'm coming from on all this stuff is just yeah. like it just allows them to it just opens that door, I guess, and makes it an easier, you know, uh, navigation, I guess, to fans. Yeah, dude, for sure. Well, dude, you're so. doing the right things, man. We believe in you. Seriously. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. I can't ever promise that I'm going to be a full on metalhead ever. That's OK. But you know what? <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. You know, I mean, truthfully, so the thing that's crazy about music is like in 10 years, like this music will probably be totally obsolete anyways. So it's like that's why I always like I think that the core meanings behind this stuff, that's what's that's what lasts. That's what sustains. But like music, for the most part, like it's art, but it's a fad, too. Yeah. So it can just like it can be obsolete in a few years. So thank you for like putting the like like the, the exclamation point on the Praiser House podcast, because that is it. You yeah. hit the nail on the head. It's it's the meaning. It's look, music right. is music is music. You can, you can only play D G C so many different yeah. variations and with yeah. certain intensities. Uh, but bringing God first and foremost, encouraging others that maybe need that encouragement, and yeah. just trying to like love one each other. Like we all bleed the same color. Like I'm very much about that. My mother's an art major. My dad's a business head. But um, we we really we really appreciate you nailing that in the head, man. You, yeah. Look, you are welcome here anytime. You come yeah. to Florida, you got a place to crash. You yeah, want to go dude. surfing? Sweet. I'll take you surf. You like fishing? I got the best. Ooh, holes. I've never. Okay, I've never seen a gator. I've yet to see oh, an, dude. see a gator. You gotta take me on a gator gator hunt. <laughs> so yeah. you come down and I'll, we'll rent a boat, right? Like this, is, I'll put it out there on the podcast. We'll rent a boat, right? Bring the band, whatever. You know, and we'll get on the boat. We'll show you gators. If you like fishing, we'll take you fishing. Uh, I don't know if you're into that. Um, if you want to get on a longboard and try to surf, we can we can yep. do that. 
Uh, and then if you're feeling real froggy and you want to go to Disney World and conquer that world, that's right there. Universal, yeah, the whole all, thing. I'm about all of that. There it is. The Gators is awesome. easy. The Gators, Gators is easy. Like, I, I saw a Gator. Like, we've been here. Uh, I moved down here four years ago. So, like, uh -huh. we were driving driving by on the side street here in Vero. And and, uh, and Kendra's like, stop, turn around, turn around. And so we go back, and there's a six-foot Gator in a ditch. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. oh, my gosh, that's the like, biggest they're, Dude, they're crossing, like, the, 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 nine, you know, the ninth hole of the golf course. Yeah, you it's know? insane. Dang. And I'm a fourth generation It's like native. Jurassic Park down here. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and so – Go for it, we've, Jeremy. We've we've toured like Florida. I want to say probably like six to eight times, and every time I'm like, I gotta see a gator. Yep. I'm yet to see a gator. Oh man! So. Does it cross into you wanting to try gator tail? Oh, I would try definitely. Okay. Hands down, I would try that. I did have in New Orleans. I had um, what do they call it? Blackened gator. Yeah, there you or go. Something like that. No I different. Thought it was pretty. I thought it was great. Yeah, yeah. It's but, good stuff, man. Um, when my yeah. when we talked about our 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 old line of dirt farmers, they would even eat like rattlesnake. I don't get into the whole thing, you know, like, but yeah. we, but we have like the other other white meat. <laughs> and if you really want to get really into it, there, even South South Florida, there's like a pandemic of. Um, uh, like pythons. Guanas. Oh, Pyth well, iguanas too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so like there's like no limit on hunting pythons in the Everglades because they're destroying our wildlife, and we're about protecting oh, right. our wildlife here, uh, especially yeah. being a Florida native. And but hey, man, look, this has been so refreshing, Jeremy. So thank you so much. God bless you guys. Like, just keep crushing it, dude. Just keep doing yeah. it. Got like, nothing better to do. <laughs> yeah, man. We love the ink. We love the vibe. We love the music. You're welcome here anytime. You got our numbers. Just give us a buzz. And uh, God bless you guys into 2021. And we'll make sure you guys, everyone sees this. So, hey, real quick before he goes, we're going to hang yeah. around yeah. and talk about this interview. It's been really great. But earthgrowns.com, Jeremy, we're not going to make sure they leave without yep. that. The same thing yep. for their social media. So all of them get involved. He loves to talk to the fans. The band does. Yep. And if you don't listen to the music on a regular basis and you want something from it, it gets get it gonna get cold. Not in Florida, but it's gonna get cold. Go to their merch. Buy yeah. something, yeah. man. Get a, get a hoodie. Get a hoodie, and then yeah. look out for the tour schedule because through their social and their website, they're gonna announce their their tours. Yeah, and hopefully that just blows up in twenty twenty one. Yeah, say hello to the band for us, man. It's been a pleasure. I hope it's a great rest sure, of the sure. week. Yeah, brother. Have a good awesome. one, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thank All right, you. man. See you, bro. Take Thanks, care. Man. All right, man. Dude, how cool was that to have that was Jeremy good. Schaefer from Earth Grows? It was awesome. Unbelievable. Yeah. That guy's a class act, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, passionate, as real as it gets, and then he blows everybody away with his mustache. <laughs> I know. I got so much so much to learn from on my mustache game. It's Oh, I mean, you got to kind of grow I know, it a little but, bit. I know, but it's 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 not it's not there. Well, I got to say that the big, you know, the big takeaway is always, you know, when we interview folks like Jeremy is that it bring we we hope that it brings people closer to the Lord. Yeah, and it's so cool that we can do it through our passion through music. Yeah, you know we can just hang out on the phone with these guys and girls, talk music, talk love, love passion, and yeah. and bring faith into that discussion. Yeah. Yeah. How cool! It's awesome. It was great, man. Are, are you kind of flying right now? Do <laughs> yeah. I need to? Do I need to bring? We need to, <laughs> need to put some boots on. No, like, it let, was let good. the flack out and just kind of yeah <laughs> coast on down. I mean, it, it was cool too that uh, like like we talked about like this this we did the first two episodes, but yeah. this is our first. You know, we talk about seasons and chapters. Like, we only did the first season was pretty short, <laughs> two episodes just us talking, and then new season where we're talking with guests. And what a, what a cool way to intro that. Yeah, and I think it's going to be really exciting as we kind of we go through the season, just for people to see what we're doing. I, look, I, I I do listen to podcasts and I listen to the interviews out yeah. there, but I really want people to have fun. Yeah, I want to, if you're going to like watch this. And you're gonna retweet and you're subscribed. Like I get involved in things that are fun. Yeah. You know, things that like I really enjoy. I want it to be no different. You yeah. know? Um, so that's kind of where we're at with this, and we can't wait to get it out to the folks out yeah. there. So if you haven't gotten involved, this is the Praiser House. Make sure you subscribe, you know, like, retweet, follow, share, the yep. whole thing. Um, comments, those are open. Yep. So please do and we have social media sites for the Praiser House. So there's we have social media for Praiser, but we've off we've also got uh, new social media sites. Yeah, that, and let's yeah. give Praiser a plug. I mean, the whole reason we're doing this is because Praiser, the platform yeah. and the 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 business, the organization of us of who we are as a music group, is allowing us to create this platform called yeah. the Praiser House. And so I came on two years ago. You and I've been working. It's a short two years, man. Yeah, short two years. Well, we're now here and moving into an on-demand space. Mm -hmm. Unreal, yeah. you know, from what it's been. And so, if you don't know what Praiser is, it's a Christian music streaming service, hand curated. We've got Christian music from all genres, like 34 plus genres, yeah. and we do pay attention to what's coming out there. 
but we are moving into a new model because all of our fans, like we have such a loyal yeah. fan base. We, we thank do. you, like, awesome. thank you, Praiser fan yeah. and followers, um, for being involved with us because our success is only for those who are involved. Yeah, and we say thank you. We really mean it, and we ask that you go pre-register. So go to praiser.com, click on pre-register. Yeah, you can go ahead and subscribe to a premium plan. Tons of new features. Yeah, search. Playlists, shuffle, unlimited skipping, unlimited uh, offload yeah. downloads. Yeah, all the things that our, our audience has been asking for for Begging. the past couple of years. Like, man, I love Praiser, but I wish I could choose a song or I could search a song and I could re loop a song. You know, we just, we're like, all right, well, let's do it. And well, we'll and it comes with no shortage of effort, yeah. but also comes with an expense. And yeah. so that's why we ask people to get involved because, like, we're not, we're not like, this is not like, you know, something that's just going to blow up it's going to be a gradual progression yeah. of growth but it happens when people are involved so do pre-register go to praiser.com that's really exciting and we do we've got another platform out there that's being launched we do four core four music core music yeah, yeah it's coming so people are like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. stop pump the brakes <laughs> what's four core four core music is a global digital distribution company yeah and so it's kind of got a three you know three tier level where you can distribute directly through us so creators out there songwriters musicians instrumentalists DJs producers if it's family friendly yeah of all genres yeah. I don't care what genre metal hip-hop singer songwriter you name it polka polka <laughs> I, I I would get to see if a polka artist sends in and it's family friendly and your face align and all this I, I want to hear it. I want to hear that. I'm going to put it on this podcast. I, I'm actually, I don't think I've ever listened to Polka. I, I'd be really interested I, to hear yeah, that. It would be interesting. <laughs> but Four Core Music is going to launch. Yeah. We're hoping we get it out in December before the end of the year. Yeah. Might roll to January. No promises. But if you want to distribute your music, you don't need to go to TuneCore. Yeah. Don't need to go to Ditto. Don't need to go to CD Baby or any of these others. Come right to us. Yeah. We'll help you. We get behind the artists, too. So yeah. there's a plethora of artist services there to help you. So if you don't know what an EPK is or one sheet. Like, or you, if you're like me a couple years ago, like, <laughs> I know nothing. I Here's my music. I do this, and it goes <laughs> to the magical Spotify. Well, hey, you got a brother in the business. That's right. And we crushed the game in Nashville. Yeah, and dude. I mean, look at this. So let's just plug you, too, Mike. Uh Mike's doing a shameless plug, and I support it. <laughs> and it's called an EP, The Dawning Fire. Yeah. Uh, Mike Rathke, um, I actually had my hand on that project, too. I can't believe it. Yeah. I forgot all the stuff that happened. But uh, my good friend Billy Chapin, former guitarist of Backstreet Boys, yeah. gone on to be engineer with Don Henley under Stan Lynch, who produced Don Henley's album in Nashville. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. But he and I worked together over the years, and I brought him in. I said, hey, you know, you want to do this project? I got this guy, Mike Rathke. He's like, oh, Brandon, you know, I, I listen to everything you send me, but, oh, by the way, I'm super busy. Yeah, I said to the dinner, he calls you back in 30 minutes. He's like, oh, my gosh, we're going to produce it. I said, yeah. So I, I was able to co-produce on that record. That was a really exciting opportunity. Uh, went to Nashville. You killed it. Uh, covered a ton of songs. We've talked about that in the yeah. previous episode, episode two, so we won't go yeah. too detailed for our audience. But uh, if you haven't checked it out, MikeRathkeMusic.com. But what a cool, like, um, it, it was kind of a, I don't even know if we had, we we had had talks about the aggregator, but I don't know, we didn't have a name for it. We didn't have. Oh, no it, way. Th this, no so way. it was kind of like. God orchestrating the waters to to steer like how how this could become a how this could become a thing in the prison yeah. organization. And well, you had said a really good thing to me. You said, Brandon, you know, I've been thinking a lot about the aggregator, and so so people get to know us. You know, like I'm like the salt, and Mike's like the dirt, dirt and the salt. Oh, great, I'm Sounds... dirt. I like to be dirt. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a good analogy. But no, what I'm saying is like like of our influences, we have different musical. Yeah, and you know. Preferences, yeah, yeah, for sure. but there's a core of us that just is like the exact same. Yeah, oh, like yeah. the Ray La Montaines of the world, and yeah. you know, the Ben Harpers, the you know, Damien Rice. Yeah. Is. Anyhow, we could go on for days for that. But you came to me with this idea of like, what if we had like this renaissance, this movement? And I was oh, like, yeah, right. Well, what if we did that, but also empowered the music artist? And it was a cool like, uh, yeah, that was a cool conversation because it's like you know we're on the 500 anniversary of the Protestant Reformation, there and that's is. from the Renaissance era, and it's like. Yep. Man, there's some there's something kind of cool in this whole here. thing, and there's a lot of talk. And, and you brought and, the dirt, I brought the salt. We brought the salt. We made a mud pie, <laughs> and, but it's like there's a lot of talk from artists that we've talked with that are like, man, we need a Renaissance movement in Christian music. Yes, I mean, we, yes. It, not just in Christian music, but in just music in general. Because I've been fighting Mike so hard for the artist with yeah. a voice for so long. Yeah, and I've been fortunate, you know, work for Grammy Award winners, Dove Award winners, uh, you know, these these people in the that have had this major success. Mm -hmm. But I've also spent a lot more time with artists 
who got nowhere. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure, we released and pre-released, you know, uh, top 40, you know, 42 on the singer-songwriter charts or something on iTunes. Yeah. Okay. You know, top 40 finisher of The Voice or, you know, been out there, you know, had these interviews, been on the cameras, whatever. But to be able to, like, have a platform that not only are you going to give them a direct output and then allow their product to be on these DSPs, the Spotify's, the the, the Praisers, the Pandora's, whoever. Yeah. But then you can be right there putting your arm around them. Like, that's what I've been doing for all these years. Right. But then now, like, push it even further with service. And, it, and, it, and That's I think cool. It's, and I think that's like, goes into the story of, like, just the way God orchestrates things. Like, he puts us in opportunities and in things that, that train us and prepare us. Like David said, he prepares my hands for battle. Like, yes. I, I'm able to bend a bar of, of bronze or something like that. You know, it's like he, he puts you in those places. Um, and even in David where he's out on the – in the in the meadows like protecting lambs he's like well i've i've killed lions and bears i can kill the goliath you know right but those were training training periods that prepared him for the goliaths and it's like exactly you know with what you've done in artist management and what we're doing now in fraser like god orchestrates those seasons so that you can get to that place where you need to be you know 10 20 years from now And, and without those seasons you wouldn't have the the skills or the the passions to do it exactly the reason why you have to do yeah. You just got to get up yeah. every day. If God gives you the blessing, listen, I'm going to encourage our audience. If you woke up today, then guess what? You have the opportunity yeah. to give it back to God because he allowed you to wake up today. Mm-hmm. Life is very living. simple. Yeah. Very simple. So yeah. we do, we, so four core music's coming. Music artists, uh, excuse me, music digital distribution. So 700 retailers we reach on day yeah. one. Yep. 700 retailers on day one. And we can help you with services if you need them. But we don't want to get away from that one f- wonderful, refreshing, God-filled interview with Jeremy Schaefer from Earth Groans. Yeah. What a treat. Good dude. What yeah, a, yeah great dude. Seriously. Yeah. Not to not to one up there. Just it's a great <laughs> No, dude. he's a great dude. No, he's a fantastic no, no, dude. <laughs> no, Mike, he's the dude of the dude. No. Uh, you can see that Mike and I like to have a lot of fun. Yeah. And um Again, I'll be the dirt this time. He's the salt. <laughs> so we'll flip it. Uh, but Joe, go check out Earth Groans, earthgroans.com. Yeah. We've got some exciting things coming up, too. Um, man, we have Young Oceans on schedule. Got Young Oceans. We got uh, comedian Brad Stein. Brad Stein. People don't really know about Th- Throw Give Brad a yeah. shout real quick. Brad Stein, he's a, he's a, he's a Christian comedian, and he's, he's been, been around on, for a while. He's been around a while, yeah. He's been on um, a lot of different shows, talk shows and things, and... Um, we have him on our comedy channel, yeah. and uh, we just kind of reached out to him, I think in Facebook Messenger, like, hey, we got a podcast, you want to come on? He's like, sure. <laughs> All right, well, let's do it. <laughs> and one-liner sink and sink as well, yeah. yeah. Uh, so then you got Young Oceans. Yeah. Uh, got to reach out to some other folks we had met along the way last yeah. year, especially at the Dove Awards. You know, it didn't go off. It, give a shout-out to our our, our our wonderful partnership with the Gospel Music Association. Yeah. We hope to bring Justin. Justin Fratt yeah. works there. And we hope to bring him on as well as Jackie. Hopefully, Jackie will join. Maybe yeah. the both of them we can get cool. on the same time. Yeah, why not? Might yeah. as well. Jackie, we love you. I know you're listening. Hopefully, you're you're sharing this too on your social media. I know you got an Instagram game, girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I heard. I see. I'll be seeing you. And uh, I do. She does, man. She does. And Jeremy's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Justin. Excuse me. He's got it going on too. Yeah. Um, Justin's such a cool man. He, yeah, he he, is. he's such a good guy. And, he, you know, he really, he really has helped us a lot, yeah. and and likewise. But you know, going back to meeting these other folks, when we're backstage, you know, I was talking to Riley Clemens and then Aaron Cole, and I got to see Torn again. Um, we hope those the, some of the folks yeah. we can bring on, and and Natalie. I mean, just the list goes on. I yeah. can't wait to talk to Tasha Cobbs. Yeah, um, there's so many, and and even the names that aren't out there. There's so many amazing stories. You know, like we were had we had breakfast with Austin French after um, Grace Fest. Yeah, and. Yep. Um, and what a cool experience for you. You got to perform there and sing the Dawning Fire acoustically in front of 5,500 people. Yeah. That was a really cool thing. But the end of the day, folks, is we hope that you subscribe to the Praiser House. We're going to wrap it up now for Episode 3. It was really good. So one more plug there for Jeremy Schaefer, earthgrowns.com. Yeah. Go check them out. Listen to their music. Even if you're not a metal person, there's a lot of respect on their game. And you might become a, lot a metal respect. person. Like, I mean, you it, might it's, be it's converted. Kinda like, it's kind of like coffee. I mean, you don't just wake up and be like, you know what? I love coffee. This is delicious. You know, it's like, and you've never had you a take cup. a little sip. You're like, <laughs> oh, this is, oh, it's a little strong, a little, but I feel great when I eat, when I drink it. You know, metal's <laughs> a little bit like that. You like take a little sip and you're like, 
Oh, okay. And then you start to hear like the technical stuff that's going on, and you start to hear. Oh, it's ridiculous. The, the technique and the in the in the patterns and in, in phrasing of guitar. Like pretty soon you're gonna be like, you know what? I, I, is Earthgrown's coming to town? I'm gonna go check them out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, go make sure to check them out. Earthgrown's.com. Grab that one of those new Fall Line merch. They're killing it. And look, we we love y'all. Just subscribe, yeah. like us, and guess what? We're going to make sure we see you on episode four. Episode four. It's Man. coming right up. And uh, actually, yeah, we're filming that right around the corner. It's not going to be long. It won't be long. It won't be long. So uh, actually this week, I think we're going to knock is. out this week. So we'll knock out this week. You guys keep us in posted. And if you want to go check out our social, that is going to be all of your main channels, forward slash The Praiser House. Yep. And The Praiser House um, website is going up right away. Yep. Love you guys. God bless you. Take care, okay? See you guys. See ya. The Fraser House.